I can't remember what it's like To hold one you love by your side Or maybe I just can't seem to sing to save my When I'm with you, there's no reason for why I'm intoxicated by your side Nothing in the world's gonna beat this high I've been searching for all of my life When I'm with you So good morning everyone and on behalf of the North Yorkshire Registration Service welcome here to Rudding Park. My name is Chris Head and it gives me great pleasure to conduct this ceremony today for Andrew and Hannah. My colleague is Liz and she's the registrar who will oversee the legalities of the ceremony today and complete the marriage schedule. Before we begin, please can you confirm your full name, starting with you please, Andrew. Andrew Paul Stenson. And? Hannah Victoria Wright. Are you ready to begin? Shall yes. we get you married? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> this place in which we are now met has been duly sanctioned according to law for the celebration of marriages. And you were gathered here to witness the joining in matrimony of Andrew Paul Stenson and Hannah Victoria Wright. If there is any person here today who knows of any lawful impediment to this marriage, they should declare it now. Before you are joined in matrimony, I have to remind you of the solemn and binding character of the vows you are about to make. Marriage in this country is the union of two people voluntarily entered into for life to the exclusion of all of us. Now I'm going to ask each of you in turn to declare that you do not know of any lawful reason why you should not be married to each other. So Andrew, please repeat these words after me. I do solemnly declare. I do solemnly declare. That I know not. That I know not. Of any lawful impediment. Of any lawful impediment. Why I, Andrew Paul Stenson. Why I, Andrew Paul Stenson. May not be joined in matrimony. May not be joined in matrimony. To Hannah Victoria Wright. To Hannah Victoria Wright. I know it's your turn, Hannah. I do solemnly declare. I do solemnly declare that I know not that I know not of any lawful impediment of any lawful impediment why I Hannah Victoria Wright why I Hannah Victoria Wright may not be joined in matrimony may not be joined in matrimony to Andrew Paul Stenson to Andrew Paul Stenson perfect Andrew and Hannah wish to marry for in each other's company they found happiness and love as a consequence of this love they've drawn closer to each other and both now wish to affirm publicly their relationship and also offer each other the security that comes from vows sincerely made and faithfully kept. Marriage must be entered into freely, voluntarily and with the full and unreserved consent of you both. Therefore, do you Andrew take Hannah here present to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. 
And do you, Hannah, take Andrew here present to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. The solemn moment, therefore, has come for Andrew and Hannah to make the contract of marriage before you, their witnesses. If you're able, will you please stand? If you just turn and face each other, you can still hold hands. So, Andrew, I'm going to ask you to repeat these words after me, but say them to Hannah. I, Andrew Paul Stenson. I, Andrew Paul Stenson. Take you, Hannah Victoria Wright. Take you, Hannah Victoria Wright. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. I promise to love you always. I promise to love you always. To be true to you alone. To be true to you alone. To share happiness and sorrow. To share happiness and sorrow. To honour you and to show respect at all times. To honour you and show respect at all times. I promise to be loving, faithful and loyal. I promise to be loving, faithful and loyal. From this day forward. From this day forward. That's lovely, thank you. So Hannah, it's your turn now. So repeat these words, but please say them to Andrew. I, Hannah Victoria Wright. I, Hannah Victoria Wright. Take you, Andrew Paul Stenson. Take you, Andrew Paul Stenson. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. I promise to love you always. I promise to love you always. To be true to you alone. To be true to you alone. To share happiness and sorrow. To share happiness and sorrow. To honour you and to show respect at all times. To honour you and show respect at all times. I promise to be loving, faithful and loyal. I promise to be loving, faithful and loyal. From this day forward. From this day forward. That's lovely, thank you. If you'd like to take your seats please and if you want to just turn and face this way. So the purpose of marriage is that you may always love, care for and support each other through all the joys and the sorrows of life. And that love may be fulfilled in a relationship of permanent and continuing commitment. And we trust that these things may come true for you both. Andrew and Hannah, you have both made the declarations prescribed by law and you have made a solemn and binding contract with each other in the presence of your witnesses gathered here this morning. It is my very great privilege and pleasure to tell you that you are now lawfully married. Congratulations. You may kiss your wife, sir. All that this remains way. for me to do is extend very warm congratulations to you both on behalf of Liz and I and your witnesses and your photographer and Nikki from uh, Rudding Park. Have an amazing day today. I'm sure you will. The chapel is beautiful, isn't it? And the weather is perfect. I think everyone would also want to join me though in wishing you a very long and happy married life together. Shall we give it up for Mr and Mrs Stenson? <laughs> So off you go to get all ready for the uh, perfect for the blessing. Thank you. It's been so lovely to meet you. Oh, when it's love, when we've lost control. Maybe for once I can finally find my home. To my husband, from this moment on I give you my heart to you. Love from Hannah. To Andrew, thank you for making today and every day special. I am so happy I found you. I never want to be without you. Love your wife, Hannah.
Nothing in the world gonna be this hard. I've been searching. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for the entrance of the bridal party? We are assembled in this holy place in the presence of Almighty God 
to witness the joining of Hannah and Andrew in holy matrimony. Andrew and Hannah are already married in accordance with civil law, and we now come to bless their union in the presence of God and among family and friends. We pray. Heavenly Father, Creator and Redeemer, by your Holy Spirit and in the name of Christ Jesus, be in our midst and pour out your abundant blessing on this service and sacred union. Make known your presence, peace and everlasting love. Amen. Would you like to take your seats? Are you going to manage that? Our service today is very much the work of uh, Andrew and Hannah. They have put together things that are important to them, pieces of music, readings that will speak to them for this time and from now on. And I'm going to invite Katie now, who's going to come and read. Maybe. Maybe we're supposed to meet the wrong people before we meet the right one. So when they finally arrive, we are truly grateful for the gift we have been given. Maybe it's true that we don't know what we have lost until we lose it, but we, it's also true that we do not know what we're missing until it arrives. Maybe the happiest of people don't have the best of everything, but make the best of everything that comes their way. Maybe the best kind of love is the kind where you sit on the sofa, not saying a word and walk away feeling like it was the best conversation you ever had. Maybe once in a lifetime you find someone who not only touches your heart, but also your soul. Someone who loves you for who you are and not what you could be. Maybe the art of true love is not about finding the perfect person, but about seeing an imperfect person perfectly. Those are some very profound and worthy thoughts that we've just heard in that poem. And, and maybe I don't uh, need to share uh, my reflection, but I'm, but I'm going to anyway. Later in this service, we will hear some verses from the Old Testament book, The Song of Solomon. The Song of Solomon is at one level a series of poetic love letters between a man and a woman but it's also a love between a loving God, a love letter between a loving God and his beloved children, between Christ and his church. Within the book, passion, intimacy and love are key themes. Love is a very small word, but it has a multitude of meanings and to say, oh, I love that burger. That really isn't love at all. It's just an expression that we've come to use. The ancient Greeks had at least six different words that they used for love. They have a word for God's love for us and the love that we should have for him, agape. They have a, a word for intimate sexual love, eros. They have a word for love for friends. They have a word for love for family. They even have a word for self-love. Now, some of us never really learn to love ourselves, but it is a command there in the Bible. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, Jesus said. That was the first and the greatest commandment, with all your soul, with all your mind. He said, and the second is like it, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. Love your neighbour as yourself. That means you've got to have regard for yourself. You've got to have heed for yourself, for your well-being in every circumstance, in every situation. The Greeks also had a word 
for love shown to strangers, xenia. That's the ancient Greek aspect, uh, concept of hospitality. But none of these refer directly to romance or romantic love, though in marriage there should be room for all of these things at work. In the Bible, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the Apostle Paul says if he doesn't have love, he's nothing more than a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. There are many clanging cymbals in the world today. Those who shout loudly that they have rights without ever acknowledging they also have responsibilities. Here is one thing wife and husband, husband and wife in any marriage should understand. They have both rights and responsibilities. One responsibility is to give and to show love. And one right within marriage is to receive love. In Ephesians chapter 5, there's a passage, I think it's among the most misunderstood in the Bible, but it says, wives serve your husbands, husbands loves your wives as Christ loved the church. A number of years ago, my wife Brenda and I were in Africa on mission, and I preached this word in the west of Tanzania, or I shared this word in the west of Tanzania, and when I said, wives serve your husbands, all the men in the gathering were there. They were, yes, wives, save your husbands. <laughs> oh, couldn't have made them more happy if I tried. At the same time, many of the ladies were sat with their heads down. But when I explained to them that husbands are to love their wives as Christ loved the church, that so much that he gave his life for her, the attitudes changed somewhat. Service and love, love and service, are two sides of the same coin. When the Apostle Paul spoke about love in 1 Corinthians, he did so because his life had been changed forever and set on a new path by the love of God that he encountered. The love that God shows us and requires of us is a love that puts the other person first. It's a practical love, a doing love, a love that isn't afraid to get its hands dirty, a love that overcomes selfish attitudes, a love that puts up when the other person has the occasional off day, a love that tends to sick children, a love that doesn't dwell on thoughtless actions, and a love that says, I may not bring you roses every day. Do you bring roses every day? Every other. Every, every other day. This guy's going to get us all in trouble. <laughs> A love that may not say, I bring you roses every day, but I'll still be there at the end of the day, at the end of the week, the end of the year, doing the things that need to be done. The marriage commitment is to love and to serve. And we can share love because in Jesus, perfect love has been made known to all of us. When a couple are married, there should be romance, there should be affection, there should be intimacy and happiness. And taking time to do and to be together, there should be time and space to talk and to listen Conversation's a two-way thing. And to understand. Marriage is a joining together with the intention of two becoming one. Love is all of this and more. Love one another, Jesus said, as I have loved you. And as Jesus puts up with our imperfections, so we must live in the realisation that relationships need working at that the other person is not perfect, and that showing real love sometimes means turning the other cheek. The love that comes through commitment is found in doing the everyday things of life, is the love that will remain when the honeymoon is over, when the newness has worn off. 
Love is a gift of God. And like any gift, it's only ever any good when we use it. Now, your Auntie Mabel may have given you... Have you got an Auntie Mabel? No, that's fine then. Great. Your Auntie Mabel may have given you the most, the most clever and useful kitchen gadget, but it's only of ever any use if you take it out of the box, you plug it in and use it. I don't know about you, but of our generation when we were married, Breville toasters were the thing to get. And um, we, we got so many that several of them remained in the box for several years afterwards. To know the fullness of God's great gift, we have to give love. We have to show love. We have to be love. And the best thing about God's great gift of love is that it never gets old. It never gets old. It doesn't have a phone either. It never gets old. It never goes out of date. And it's just as good 50 years down the line as it was on the first day. Some verses on love from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It's known as the chapter of love. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. And I say to you and to all of us that we won't go far wrong in marriage if you love one another as Jesus loved and truly make his love a priority. Amen. We come to the part of the service that you've been waiting for and I'm going to ask uh, Andrew and Hannah now to stand. We're gathered together in the sight of God and in the presence of one another to celebrate the marriage of this man and this woman in holy matrimony and to seek God's blessing and grace on their behalf. At this time, let us remember that marriage is more than a civil contract, more than a social convention or a religious ceremony. It was ordained by God from the beginning as the sacrament of human society for the mutual fellowship, help and comfort of husband and wife in prosperity and adversity, for the honourable procreation of children, and for their training in love and obedience to the Lord. Marriage is declared by God to be honourable in all, so we must conclude that it is not to be regarded in a light manner, but undertaken and entered, entered into in all solemnity with wisdom and forethought, reverently, and in the fear of God. Into this holy bond, these two persons here present, Hannah and Andrew, are now joined. Turning to Andrew. Andrew, will you take Hannah as your wife to live together in marriage according to God's laws? Will you love her? Comfort her, honour and keep her in sickness and in health, and, forsaking all other, keep only unto her as long as you both shall live. I will. And to Hannah. Hannah, will you take Andrew as your husband to live together in marriage according to God's laws? Will you love him, comfort him, honour and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all other, keep only unto him as long as you both shall live. I will. We come now to the time when 
Andrew and Hannah are going to read their vows, vows that they have prepared, especially for today. Hannah, as I stand here in front of you today, ready to become your husband, I want to express my love for you, but the love that I feel is far greater than any words could ever describe. It's an inexplainable attraction, an overwhelming desire for our two souls to unite, to spend eternity together in this life and the next. So as we take our journey together, I could promise you the world to never fight or disagree, but these are not promises I would be able to keep. These are words without the truth and are only uh, for over-optimistic couples, the ones who think marriage is always easy like a bed of roses. So, the vows I make to you now are promises I will keep forever through the good times and the difficult. Hannah, I promise to always love you. When we fight, I might not say it out loud, but no, I will still love you. I promise to never walk out on you, although I may walk away to give myself some time and space to call down, but no, I will always come back home to you. I promise that no, mal no amount of temptation would ever make me unfaithful to you, as you are the woman I want to spend the rest of my life with. You are the first thing I want to see when I wake up every morning, and the last thing I want to touch every night. I promise to show you the respect you deserve, to stand by your side through all that life throws at us, to be a shoulder to cry on, as well as a friend to laugh with. Words alone, mean nothing without the actions to support my promises. And though I mean every word I've said from the deepest depths of my heart, I endeavor to spend the rest of my life upholding my promises I've made to you today. You are my best friend. You are, beautiful to my, you are the beautiful to my crazy. And I would be lying if I said I could live a day without you. Neither of us are perfect. Um, but as I, as I know, we are perfect for each other. Hannah Victoria Wright, you are my person, my love, and my life. Andrew, when I sat down to write my vows, I realised there was no way I could possibly convey how much you mean to me. Then I had a few glasses of wine and the words flowed. <laughs> I knew from our first date, right here at Reading Park, that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with you. What, really tr re what truly stood you apart from the rest is how you love me and my children. With you, I feel safe, respected, empowered, cherished and valued. It's the little everyday things you do that make me feel special, such as cooking delicious meals, ordering my favourite beauty products when they run out, booking family trips, writing poems, and a million other things I could list. From this moment on, I promise to spend every day trying to make you feel as loved and special as you make me feel. I promise to laugh at your jokes <laughs> and feign an interest in Man United. I promise to love you and our four beautiful and amazing children. I promise to love you for who you are and never try to change you. I promise to be by your side through thick and thin, good and bad. Unless there is a spider, then you're on your own. <laughs> we won't always agree on everything, but we both agree that we love each other and, and we'll both work hard to make our marriage work and respect each other's individual and unique personalities, hopes and dreams. I'm used to making tough decisions at work, but saying yes to marrying you was the easiest decision I've ever made, and I would choose you a thousand times over. I know I've found my true love and can't imagine my life without you. I want to wake up next to you every morning, drink coffee in bed, and listen to country music, because you are my person. lay them down it's fine you look nice there as somebody once said the best laid plans of mice and men <laughs> Thanks, buddy. 
Let me hold the box. I don't have enough hands for this. It's okay, no, it's okay, no, it's okay. Andrew, we take Hannah's ring and put it on to You say after me, I give you this ring. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As the token of the covenant. As the token of the covenant. As the token of the covenant. Made between us this day. Made between, between us this day. day. And as a pledge of our mutual love. As, as a pledge of our mutual love. love. For as much as Andrew and Hannah have consented together in holy matrimony before God and in the presence of this company and have pledged faithfulness to each other by the giving and receiving of a ring and by joining hands, I now pronounce you husband and wife, wife and husband, those whom God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Just, just stay like that for a moment. The blessing. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, for you have created joy and gladness, pleasure and delight, love, peace and fellowship. Pour out the abundance of your blessing upon Andrew and Hannah in their new life together. Let their love for each other be a seal upon their hearts, and a crown upon their heads. Bless them in their work and in their companionship, awake and asleep, in sorrow, in sorrow and in joy, in life and in death. And at the last, in your mercy, bring them to that banquet where your saints feast forever in your heavenly home. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Can I invite you to take your seats and we'll continue with the Lord's Prayer. We continue in prayer as we join together to say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Amen. who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully grant you the riches of his grace, that you may please him both in body and soul, and living together in faith and love, may receive the blessings of eternal life. Amen. I now invite you to come and to light your unity candle. Light is used in so many different ways, in so many different circumstances. But here, the joining of two flames together is a symbolic act in which Andrew and Hannah show their unity one with another. The two become one. Oh, no, no, 
little wetter. I now invite husband and wife, wife and husband, to share a sign of their unity, a kiss. Would you like to be seated? Continuing with the very much evident theme of love, Natalie is now going to come and read from Song of Solomon. So, Song of Solomon 2, 10 to 13. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For love is strong as death, passion fierce as the grave. Its flashes are flashes of fire, a raging flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can floods drown it. If one offered for love, all the wealth of one's house, it would be utterly scorned. We're now going to have a piece of music that Andrew and Hannah have chosen, played for uh, us by our musicians, and it's a theme from Beauty and the Beast, I understand. Never has a trio been so well conducted. <laughs> Can I ask you to stand? 
and now to the congregation. Marriage is a commitment made this day between Hannah and Andrew. Though the pledge is made between husband and wife, wife and husband, yet they also require the help and support of friends and of family. John Donne, the 17th century poet and theologian said, no man is an island. And that statement, that sentiment is as true today as it ever has been. As no man is an island, so no two people, no couple, no married couple are an island. As those who are gathered, you have no formal role nor declaration to make, but as a sign of your love and support, I now ask you to stand. Having declared and pronounced that Andrew and Hannah are now husband and wife, I would ask them once again to seal their declaration with a kiss and invite you to show your affection and your support. <laughs> and to our closing blessing, God who sees all, who knows all, and who is in all, fulfill in us the promises of your word that we may be bearers of the true light and carriers of your eternal hope. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.
for my speech, what do you think will come up most? Everyone happy? Thank you for joining us. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to have the speeches. We will please give a warm welcome to the groom, Andrew. Thank you. Sorry. I apologise, my speech is a bit long, but at least you've got your words, you know, bingo to keep you entertained. Okay, so, um, as many of you know, both Hannah and myself have been married before, so I'd like to start off by welcoming you all back once again. Um, it's my first joke out the fucking way. Oh, bugger, he's done. Uh, hopefully it's the last time I'll be welcoming you back, hopefully this one lasts. Um, so... I'm going to quickly fire around the room, just see what words you put down. I asked you to put two words down, so we'll start at that side. What two words have you got? They've not done it. Hannah and Bridesmaids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hannah love. and Love. Oh, Beautiful. Like love. Say again. Yeah. Not again. <laughs> like it. Out of the box. Oh, yep. Yeah. Got some new ones. Kids? Hannah and I love you. I think they've got it. I think they've got it. Let's see if we've got any better ones. Oh, oh, you've got a challenge, kids. Watch this table. Far table, Reverend. Country music. Oh, sweet. The drunken table's already rude. Peggy. Oh, you're about second now, I think. Um, we've got firstly punching, because it's yeah. obviously punching. And, and secondly, this wasn't me that put this, by the way. I, I don't know if you can last this long. But I've had a, the best 60 seconds of my life. Somebody thought, not me. Yeah. <laughs> So that's going to be in your speech. That's going to be my speech. <laughs> I think they lost. The only time that would happen is when the clocks change. It's okay. Uh, so I'll start the speech now. So for those of you that know me, no, I'm not actually a great fan of public speaking, which is trying, why I'm trying to throw it onto you guys. Um, so I looked at some hints and tips uh, on the internet. I don't know if anyone's done that before. It said Dutch courage. I've got red wine, white wine, uh, cocktail, Prosecco lined up here. So I think I'm about that covered. And the other one said, picture everyone in the room with no clothes on. So, Jamie, it's not that cold, mate. Woo, I you now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's the digs out the way. I had to get it because I know he's going to annihilate me later. Um, oh, whose job? There's a couple of them doing uh, things. So jokes aside for now, Firstly, I'd like to take this opportunity to express my heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you here today. Um, we know some of you have travelled a great distance. I think James and Nadia, I think you've travelled the furthest uh, to come up here. You might want to remember that. That might be a question on the crossword uh, outside if you've not had a go at that yet. Um, but we appreciate everyone's effort for coming up. We know a lot of you have had to juggle work commitments, childcare commitments and everything else around to get here. So, um, you know, from... So my gorgeous wife and I, that might be on some ones, you know, there you go. Um, we'd just like to say a huge thank you to everyone for making such an effort uh, to attend our special day today. So first toast goes to yourselves. So thank you to everyone, to everyone. Everyone. Yeah. Okay. Slower. Okay. So. I'm sure many of you know events like this don't organise themselves. We've been planning this wedding for, what, a year and a half now? Two and a half years now? Um, throughout the entire planning uh, and organisation, there remains one constant. Okay, I would suggest an idea to Hannah. She'd spend approximately half a second thinking about it, dismiss it very quickly, and then tell me what was going to happen. Um, however, I'm sure we can all agree it looks absolutely amazing today. So thank you very much, Hannah. Uh, for arranging today, you've done amazing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, not to take credit away from you, but apart from yourself, without all the support from everyone else that we've had, today just wouldn't have gone as smoothly as it has. So just to name a few, obviously the Running Park staff have been absolutely fantastic. 
Um, don't know where they've all this. Oh, we've got Nikki to represent Rudding Park there, so thank you, Nikki. Um, we've got Stacy for doing the flowers. Um, let's have a look. What else have we got here? Trio Vivo, which have disappeared while I do my speech. I think they've gone for a, a quick drink break because they've been playing all day. Uh, we've got, da da da, let's have a look, Tim. Uh, did you all see Tim the Magician? Yeah. I, how he did some of them tricks, I will never know. Uh, we've obviously got our photographers, Martin and Dennis. Thank you very much, guys, you've been amazing. Um, we've got Sandy for conducting the service today. So I've known Sandy uh, from Lehman when I was at Lehman uh, and he's helped me out so much over the years. So thank you, Sandy, and thank you very much for conducting today the lovely blessing. Uh, we've got Sarah. Where have you gone, Sarah? There she is. So Sarah's provided all the cheese board and everything. She is a chef. Uh, up and coming, so please look on our website, our details are on there. But she's absolutely fantastic and hopefully the cheese it looks amazing. Let's hope it tastes. It will be lovely when it's all served up nicely later on. Um, Richard's gone now, but for providing the horse to give today a truly fairy tale um, kind of thing. So mum sorted that out, so thank you very much. Um, I've gone through loads. Uh, let's see anyone else. Dave. Will um, for stepping in and doing the Guard of Honour. Caroline, uh, I'll, I'll let slip, she's been teaching us dancing. Uh, so you can see my Macarena later. Um, but so if it goes smoothly, you can give her a bigger round of applause. If it doesn't, then uh, I'm blaming the dance instructor, not me drinking. Um, so thank you to everyone who's been involved to give us the absolutely perfect day. It has meant so much to us and without everybody, we couldn't have done this. So those that I've just mentioned, can you all stand up? So we can give you all a massive round of applause. I'd just like to embarrass people. So you can see if anyone else is getting married, these are the people you need to speak to. So thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate everything that you've done. Okay, let's go on to the next bit. Oh, I do love embarrassing people. So mum, you're next. <laughs> 